Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. We want to read this evening. Just keep your Bible open to Daniel there. We're going to talk about Daniel's vision this evening. Daniel chapter 7. We're going to read 14 verses. And to me, they, they're music just to read them without searching and just listening to the what's going to transpire. Uh, Daniel, of course, is the revelator of the Old Testament. Uh, at least that's the, the title that I give to him, although much prophecy can be found in a lot of other books. Daniel, to me, is there's an old fellow the name of had my surname, my name, J.E. Cobb, Dr. J.E. Cobb, one of the old founders of, uh, of the Missionary Baptist group back under has a book out called Daniel and Revelation. I studied it years ago. It's still in print somewhere. Um, he's just wrong on the, the rapture. You know, I'd like to get out of here wishful thinking too, but the Lord, <laughs> he's going to bring us to it. That's what I think. Amen. Y'all can do what you think, what you want. But, um, anyway, uh, I recommend that book, what I was getting at. Um, other than those thoughts. Daniel 7 and verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, now who was Belshazzar? He was a grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. Sometimes Daniel is called Belteshazzar. B-L-T-E Shazzar. So don't confuse it. The two. But in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. He wrote it down, didn't he? Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. The four great beasts came up from the sea diverse one from another. The first was like a lion that had an eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings uh, thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, made stand upon the uh, feet as a man, and a, a man's heart was given to it. Behold another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. They said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and uh, lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, Behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. And I considered the horns and beheld there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And beheld to the thrones were cast down in the Ancient of Days. And notice that word ancient is capitalized. Y'all guess who that is? The Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was as white as snow. And the hair of his head, like the pure wool. His stone was like the fire flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fire stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand, ten, th ten thousands stood before him. The judgment was said, and the books were opened. Doesn't that sound like Revelation 20, mm -hmm. where the great white throne judgment takes place? Yeah. When the books were opened, I think it's the same scene. 
verse 11. And I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. And I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame, or cast into hell. And as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, that their life were prolonged for a season and time. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like to, look at the words, Son, capitalized. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And that was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. <laughs> we got a lot stored on it. But the Lord saw Daniel to see all this, caused him to see all this in, in, in a vision. Uh, as it was, he said he was asleep. Uh, I'm sure we've all had some restless nights and <laughs> what we call nightmares. Uh, but that was one of a real. Now, sometimes your nightmare is not doesn't have any substance to it because you're in seminary they taught us that, that your subconscious mind is, is never uh, asleep. It bounces around all the time doing something. Uh, we do things subconsciously all the time but we don't really realize that we've taught ourselves to do it. Uh, and I, my hand been sore lately and I've realized that I was all I've done with my right hand but in a dream when you're asleep you can have certain events that happened uh, yesterday tied up with events that happened 20 years ago that have no connection other than you were involved in it and they said that everything you ever saw heard thought did what have you is ingrained there and it'll tell them what's going to come up so because you had a dream doesn't mean it was Daniel's dream. Daniel's were valid. The Lord was showing him something and showing us something and God was good enough that he gave us uh, the record here. But as you study the book of Daniel, uh, his vision in this chapter is similar to Nebuchadnezzar's dream in chapter 2. Uh, most of the first six chapters of the book of Daniel are historic. Uh, some prophecy, of course, is there. We just studied this Sunday to ago with the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the, the third chapter of Daniel. Uh, but there's, uh, as you advance further in Daniel, you'll find that it's much prophecy that is there. Uh, but Nebuchadnezzar's vision in chapter 2, he saw the beast that had a head of gold. Uh, as he, the Lord himself told us that it, that was Babylon the first power that reigned over Israel that, that God allowed them to be taken captive by and then the breast and the arms uh, the head of the, represented the gold uh, of Babylon and, and then the breast and the arms was the mean old Persians and then the abdomen was a, a brass which was the Grecian Empire led by Alexander the Great, uh, and that the belly and thighs were uh, brass, and then down to the legs they were iron, uh, and the feet were part iron and part clay, uh, and that represented the Roman Empire, did it not? Uh, at least we believe it did. Uh, then. Uh, comes the stone in the dream that he had. Y'all remember when the stone showed up? I'm going to read you Daniel 2 verse 44. And in those in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. That is the stone 
that is referenced here. But in Daniel's vision, the time of it was the first year of the reign of Belshazzar. And of course, Daniel was in bed when the dream came to him. Uh, but four winds upon the great sea, which was literally the mass of humanity, as we see it. Uh, in Revelation, the Bible says, uh, talking about the things to come to pass, and finally it says, and there was no more sea. At the sea of humanity is what it meant, uh, basically. But the four beasts stand up. Nebuchadnezzar was shown the political kingdoms, but Daniel sees a spiritual significance. These kingdoms that stood exercised uh, the common thing of force, greed, selfishness, ambitions, and pleasure. Daniel saw the true character, didn't he, of those uh, powers that ruled over uh, Israel. And then the four beasts, uh, the Babylonians, verse 4, if you would look back uh, for a second there, we read a moment ago. The first was like a lion, had eagle's wings. The hell to the wings thereof was plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, as a man's heart was given to it. I believe that has reference to Nebuchadnezzar when he lost his mind. And he went out and ate with the animals that could, could, what the cows eat, the, the could. <laughs> we watch them every day in front of the house. Up, up the way but he went out and ate with the animals can you imagine that here a guy that had all this pride was lifted up and he was the number one person on earth he thought at least God allowed him to be the ruler over the world empire and now God took his mind from him he humbled him didn't he and he was caused to go out and feed with the animals now God was gracious enough that he restored him. He didn't have to restore him, but he did. But he taught him humility. And then in verse 5 of Daniel 7, I beheld another beast, second like to a bear. It raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. The Medo-Persian power is through this picture. The rising up of one side of the bear indicates a superior strength that Persia had over the Medes, although they were uh, simultaneously ruling over Israel. One was greater than the other. The three ribs in the mouth symbolize the fact that the kingdom had already conquered three kingdoms, three nations. Susanna, Lydia and Asia Minor were the three that they had already conquered at the time. And then we come to verse 6. This I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. The Grecian Empire. The leopard was Alexander the Great. With much speed, he conquered the Medo-Persians with a smaller army, by the way. Uh, they said about Alexander the Great that when he uh, gained the international power that he wept because there were no other nations to defeat him. He's a little bit of a short guy, they say. <laughs> they say history tells us that. I never saw him. I don't think I saw a legit photo of him either. But the four heads signifies the division of the kingdom. And that was under his death. There were four generals that actually took over. 
And in verse 7 we come to This I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. It had great iron teeth, and it devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Daniel's second night vision, a beast terrible and exceedingly strong, different from all the rest, it says. Evidently, the revived Roman Empire had ten horns and then another horn. Uh, and then we look at Daniel's vision of the coming Christ, and that's found in Daniel 7, verse 9. Let's read it again for emphasis' sake. And we're going to close in a moment. Now beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, the hairs of his head like the pure wool. His stone was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Fire stream issued had, had come forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and the judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. And concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their life were prolonged for a season and time. And then we, last of all, uh, we go to the scene in heaven, verse 13 and 14. And for emphasis sake, let's read it again. And I saw in the night visions. Behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, the Son come to the Father. And they brought him nearer before him. That was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Can't monkey with it. <laughs> He's all powerful, isn't he? Yeah. Aren't we glad? Because righteousness is going to excel and going to exceed, succeed. All right, somebody got any, don't ask questions about Daniel, that's too tough. <laughs> but any comments you want to make about Daniel? Now everybody has their own ideas about certain things in the prophecy of Daniel, so if your vision, I mean, if your version of it not different from mine, I won't fall out with you. And I hope you do be likewise. <laughs> Uh, but there's a whole lot to glean uh, from Daniel. Yep. And you can get a lot deeper than what I'm trying to. I'm just scratching the surface. Okay. I was sharing with Brother James something that happened here probably. 20 years ago, 25 years ago. As I can tell you about when it was, because it was about 1982 that I was running a machine shop down here on, off 10 for Weatherford, didn't see. And uh, there's a young man down there from uh, Thailand. The boys from Thailand, what came to my mind, that get that escape, that trap that they were caught in over there up water in those caves but uh, this actually happened now what I'm about to tell you uh, Linda remembered well that, but this young man was an engineer and he wanted a Christian wedding he found him a fine young uh, RN uh, they uh, approached me about a Christian wedding so they came to the house 
with Mary Clasen in hand, and I performed a ceremony for them. Yeah. And while they were there, they were telling me about a friend of theirs that had walked a long way from Nam Pen over in Thailand trying to get over here uh, where we could uh, share the land of the free. On the way, walking those hundreds of miles to the airport that he had to walk, this they shared with me. He killed seven people and ate them, cannibals. So at the time I had a teenage class back here and we met back here on Sunday morning in Sunday school and we had a brother's partner talk the adult class. But I was telling these young people about it, uh, about this guy, you know, had come over and I said he was invited to church. While I'm telling them that, the side door opens, comes in on Sunday morning, this guy comes in with this, this couple. <laughs> but then in boy, in one of them boys never will forget it, Kenny Ferris said, he don't go eat me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the idea of me sharing that story and the guy walks in, of, you know, of all people. <laughs>